For this month's video, we thought it would be interesting to play with a combination of time-lapse techniques and image editing tools. Our goal was to use the same processes that allow us to turn a still image into a creative picture and apply them to a series of images for a creative video. In December, we experienced a winter storm that did not produce any rain in our area but did have some nice cloud activity. So we set up our camera for time-lapse shooting, one frame every two seconds. The camera was wedged in our south-facing rain gutter so it would not be tempted to fall. The entire recording session lasted about one hour and produced 1,800 images. The camera was set up to output the smallest image size as a JPEG. We used full manual settings and fixed focus to eliminate variability between shots. Once the images were imported into Lightroom, we cropped the first image to level the horizon and set the image crop ratio to 16 by 9 to match the TV screen. We adjusted the tone to reduce shadow darkness, increase contrast clarity, and applied a few other tweaks to bring out the clouds sweeping by. Once done with the first image, we instructed Lightroom to apply all of the adjustments to the other 1800 images. This only took a few minutes. Apple Computer provides a free app for media files that can also be used to take a series of images and process them into a video. If you do not specify, it produces an MP4 file, which is perfect for most video streaming purposes. Under the file command in the toolbar is an option to open an image sequence. Normally, accept the default frame rate. This will give you one second of video for every 30 frames. When taking your time-lapse images in the field, keep in mind that every 30 images results in one second of video. So if you set your intervalometer to shoot every 15 seconds, for example, shooting for 15 minutes, or 60 images in total, gives you a two-second time compression movie. Select the folder your images are in and let QuickTime do its job. This effort took about five minutes to finish processing. Once we had the first video made, we wanted to try a few experiments in modifying the image with creative photo editing techniques. For most of what follows, we used a complex set of procedures that we often use on other projects to produce a creative image. We opened the first image and using the record action or macro option in Photoshop, we created a new action of the edit process from start to finish, including the save as a JPEG step. We then stopped recording and reopened Photoshop with the batch command active and the new action active pointing to the 1800 images in the folder. It took Photoshop about 15 minutes to change all of the images in the folder. Then, again using QuickTime for this series of modified pictures, we created our new movie.